example of what critters can do to wires. So imagine if you do not use quality equipment or don't have rapid shutdown. Hi guys, and today we are shining light on an important topic and that is preventing solar panel fires. So whether you're a homeowner, a business, or just curious, this video is packed with essential tips and information to ensure your solar setup is safe and efficient, and of course, will not go down in flames. We will talk in three phases. Pre-installation for those who don't have systems installed yet. Then we're gonna talk during installation, and of course, post-installation for those who already have systems in place. I will stamp the timeline for you below to help you out, skip to the right part. If you have some thoughts that you want to share or ideas that we should know, or if you're already doing the things mentioned in the video, make sure to put them in the comments. And lastly, click on that like and the subscribe button. Now let's get right to it. Solar energy is a fantastic way to reduce carbon emission as well as save money. But like any electrical system, it is not without its risk. Solar panel fires, although exceedingly rare, can happen, and they always, always make the news. Now, there's limited data on the number of solar panel fires out there, but a report from Germany shows that, it, that it's about 210 fires out of 1,300,000 installations. That is a minuscule 0.001615% of all the systems installed. First up, let's understand why solar panel fires even occur. So common causes include faulty installations with incorrect wiring, like oversizing panels on a string circuit or a branch, whatever you want to call it. That can happen with both string as well as microinverters. Another one is using wrong gauge of wire to save money. Now the size of wire should be properly calculated and it should also be stamped by a third party electrical engineer on top of a city inspector. Another cause is nicks or damage to wires or panels. Now that can happen pretty early during the installation, sometimes even before, and then also later on during excessive wear and tear. And finally, last one, using non-UL listed products and some installers even cheaping out on non-visible to an eye of an inspector connectors that are literally essential for electricity to flow properly. So what I mean is that solar system is not just the panel, the wire and the inverter, and that's it. It's conductors, conduits, junction and combiner boxes, disconnect switches, terminals, fuses, grounding, and much, much more. Now, obviously, Obviously, a lot of us will not know or even care to understand all those pieces, but if it doesn't look or feel right, you have every right to question it. So those are the most common fire causes. Now, obviously they're not all of them, but those are the ones that you somewhat have control over. So the journey to safety starts with choosing, obviously, the right equipment. So you wanna opt for solar panels and components that meet international safety standards. Look for certifications like UL 1703 for panels and UL 1741 for inverters, among other, obviously. Quality really matters. Also, make sure to go for equipment with a manufacturer that has proven track record. You don't want to buy premium just to feel safe, but if the manufacturer has been making those panels for years and years and years, they're most likely not problematic, even if they're slightly cheaper. Now, same goes for the inverter optimizers and micros. Opt for proven tra rec track record company. You can't risk your money with tech startups on stock market. Do not risk your money here, please. Yes, quality brand name products will cost a little bit more, but a few more dollars up front is well worth it for you and your family's safety. Now, there's a reason why uh, this microinverter costs this versus this one costing that, or this string inverter costing this versus this one costing that. All right, now we obviously have a little bit of a mess here because we're getting done to do all the testing for you guys in the spring. But you know, you can see how many different varieties there are of different inverter options. And on each one of them, you can see what kind of certifications your inverter has. And you can usually see it just on the label on the side of the inverter. Now let's move on to what happens during the installation. So what I'm about to say will probably make every installer mad, including my own guys. But after your installation is scheduled, ask your company for a copy of your city and utility permit, and then when your installation day arrives, double check that you are getting the panels that you signed the contract for 
Same with the inverters. So go outside and check on the units the company brought. You may have signed a contract for REC 400 watt black on black panel, but oh well, the installer made a mistake and brought you a Hyperion 370 watt panel, which actually can happen and sometimes not even on purpose. People make mistakes, but the installer may not like this or you checking on it, but this is not their money or their house. So go and check on it. Installation is not a DIY project for those inexperienced with electrical systems. Now, I'm not saying you cannot successfully do it. Well, damn, Wool Pro shows you how to do it on the internet if you're that type of a person and he's absolutely great at it, but a lot of people are not and that's okay. And that's where a professional company comes in, like us, for example. So hiring a professional installer who understands local codes and standard is crucial. They'll ensure that your system is correctly configured, reducing the risk of electrical issues. Do not ever allow an install without permits and inspections. If you're outside of city limits, which can happen and a lot of people are actually happy about it, city permits are not even required. So what you can do is hire a third party inspector to come and check on your system or at a minimum, get a third party electrical and structural stamp that you can then confirm with the job that was done. Also, make sure to ask the installer to, provi to provide full certificate of insurance and check on their electrical license. Most states' websites allowed for that to be easy searched on the internet. Now let's talk post-installation. So regular maintenance and inspections are your best defense against fires. Have your installer inspect your system at least every other year. Now some of them will actually do it for free for the first few times as part of your purchase, but if they don't, ask for it done and pay for it. They will check on wear and tear, ensure electrical connections are tied, and look for any signs of weather or critter damage or corrosion. Here's literally an example of what critters can do to wires. So imagine if you do not use quality equipment or don't have rapid shutdown, if the system would not properly shut down, this literally would be a fire hazard. This is literally an exposed wire. Also, you as the homeowner, look at your roof, look into your attic from time to time. If you see any exposed wires, give your installer a call. Again, better safe than sorry. Now finally, besides checking physically on your system every so often, another great way to make sure your system is working properly is by checking on your monitoring. And again, good quality solar system do come with monitoring technology that alerts you to inefficiencies or problems. Early detection of minor issues can prevent major issues later on. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Think blah thumbs up, uh, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for more solar videos, stay powered, stay safe, and I will see you in my next one.